Welcome to Adventures in the Spirit with Jared Lasky, a podcast that is not just information, but impartation and activation. This podcast offers supernatural conversations that will encourage and equip you to live the Spirit-empowered life. Fireborn Ministries exists to see Jesus awaken this generation to the power of the Holy Spirit. Listen in to this powerful and encouraging conversation and share this episode of Adventures in the Spirit with Jared Lasky. It's another glorious day in the wonderful, amazing, and incredible Holy Spirit. This is Adventures in the Spirit with Jared Lasky. I want to encourage you guys, if you need freedom from demonic strongholds, from demonic oppression, I have a free PDF available for you called Steps to Your Freedom. It, it's a five-day devotional that gives you different steps that eventually you start breaking down these strongholds until you are completely free in the name of Jesus. So you could Download that guide right here, right now on this, on Apple, on Spotify, because the link is in the podcast description. However, if you're listening to this on any other podcast platform that doesn't allow links, just email my ministry info at firebornministries.com and ask for that free download steps to your freedom. But guys, today I have a very special guest. Ernestine Graham. She's a co-founder of the Spirit Wind Healing Apostolic Training Center. I love how they abbreviated it. It's called SWAT. I might be messing up a few things, but she's an author. She's an apostolic leader. Uh, Her and her husband, Mike, live here in the Peoria, Arizona community. I'm so excited to be that they've opened up their doors for me to be hosting a prophetic activation conference with John Natale just here in the next couple of days. But guys, she has her master's degree from Primus University of Theology in the area of healing and deliverance, and she teaches the Word of God with accuracy and passion. She's got a heart to see the captives be set free, but also for you to be discipled in the Word of God so that you can set the captives free. So please help me welcome Ernestine Graham to Adventures in the Spirit. Welcome. Hi. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you for welcoming me. (laughs) <laughs> well, it's an honor. It's a pleasure. I'd met you through uh, Randy and Leslie Bixby. So they're kind of how we connected. We live here in the West Valley of Phoenix, but you've been here for a while with your ministry. Can you share some of your background story so that my, my listeners can be acquainted with you? So, yeah, my uh, I was vacuuming one day in 2014 when the Lord said start a nonprofit. And I was debating with him and arguing with him that I don't like the government, so I can't start a nonprofit. And that was literally my conversation with them. When a friend of mine called, I was doing ministry with her. She says, hey, I just heard the Lord say you're supposed to start a nonprofit. And I was like, there's no way you, you don't miss that, right? So we started Spirit Wind Healing Ministries basically to come alongside the churches and to help them do deliverance, because that's that was what I was called to, was just deliverance. And um, it, that quickly transformed in within two years into having this apostolic training center. And I know sometimes people question what that means. What it basically means to me is putting things in position to give room for the rest of the body of Christ and just making room. And um, so learning how to train people up came pretty quickly because you get really bombarded when you're doing deliverance and healing. So my backstory is I came from mental illness, 25 years in the psychological world uh under the care of psychologists um i have had um, a disease that created a lot of pain in my bones and ligaments and stuff so i got addicted to morphine and percocet then i started drinking and so it was just a party for three years in that realm and um and then god i don't even know just real supernatural ways that he delivered me from morphine, brought my husband and I together after 20 years. He was a a raised a Rosa Christian. So he was raised in a cult. He believed in reincarnation. I knew Jesus was the only way. But um, with all that said, we ended up coming together as one. And then God began to dismantle our lives completely. Wow. Well, how did he dismantle your lives? That's a powerful story. I would love to hear. Yeah. So, um, well, we said, Yes, and I do to the Lord. We asked him, we just prayed actually in a hotel at a relive conference, which was a nutritional product. And we were, I said, I, I feel God here. I didn't understand what I was feeling. I didn't get it, that he was breaking into our world. And I asked my husband to sit on the bed with me and pray. And we just said, Lord, can you come into this mess and fix it? 
and he had known the Lord when he was young. We were both baptized as kids, but we both went different ways. And so after we got born again and gave our lives over to the Lord, I quickly was called to ministry, having no idea that that was ever what I was going to do. We lost our business. We lost our home. We lost all the toys. We lost all the worldly success. Every bit of it was taken away. And I, I stood on my back patio one day, just crying out to the Lord, going, I don't understand. We're, we finally said yes. And now you're taking it all away. And uh, But it was the best thing that could have ever happened. Our lives were saved. Our marriage was saved. Our son was saved. Wow. He rebuilt us from there. And now we're where we are. So we know that God is a miracle working God. We know that he can reach down into the world and touch anybody he wants and do it without us. And so I think that's incredible. But when we get the opportunity to partner with them, it's even better, right? Like yeah. you're, it's even better. But he can do it without us in many ways. He chooses to have us co-labor with him. And um, so he got our yes, and he rebuilt our lives from there. And now we're standing on solid ground. Amen. I love that. Man, quite the testimony. Healed of numerous things yes. supernaturally. And now you've been leading and training people in deliverance. So how did that kind of come about? The, uh, You know, because... Some people, yeah. like for me, uh, the Holy Spirit, the first time I'd ever encountered a demon was on the mission field in India, young 18-year-old YWAM student, right? And then in time, I was a Bible college student, and usually when I fast, I come across a lot of demonic things, manifestations through people. And uh, I started reading Derek Prince and some other things. I did read some things that were a little off balance. But right. I did a course correction, you know, I, I consumed anything I could, right? But now I have a totally, I think, I believe, a biblical understanding of this. But, you know, some people have this anointing to it. I, I personally emphasize Holy Spirit, Jesus. When the demons show up, I'll deal with them. Uh, people know me as the Holy Spirit guy, not the demon guy, but I'll deal with demons, okay? Like, I'm not afraid of it. There's this anointing. But how did you just kind of walk in there? What was the process? I was on such a jesus journey in the beginning i was so broken so sick so it was just i was in a really ugly place i had um had a lot of, a lot of abuse in my background i later on in the in my old you know my years as time went on i realized i was dealing with did disassociative identity disorder whereas i had been being treated for bipolar and schizophrenia and the meds never worked and so lots of suicide attempts and I just wanted out. And but I knew Jesus when I was five. And so there was something in that knowing him as a child that just constantly drew me to him as my hope. So when we started go, we left a mega church. We were there for three years. I actually was in ministry within six months after joining a church. Mm -hmm. And which was bizarre because that's all God, because I was I was racked out nuts and <laughs> and he gave me room for this, which is so God. And then after about three years, we started saying, there's more, there's more. And I was in prayer at this mega church and or I was in worship and I felt my tongue move. And I was like, I looked at my husband. I, I felt like I was in a trance. I looked at my husband and I said, did I just do something weird? Like in front of all these thousands of people. And he goes, he didn't know what I was talking about. And I said, I think I just started speaking in tongues. He didn't know I had been researching like you. I had been looking for the deeper stuff. And so he didn't believe in tongues and we ended up going to a church that was spirit filled and the pastor there was teaching this stuff and he and i was just i knew that was what i was supposed to do and then i got involved with the prophet started following him and that just ignited me and i just knew that was where i was supposed to be was you know in the prophetic ministry and so sat under this pastor at a decent sized church here in the valley for about five years was his right hand person and um, learned so much about ministry, but felt the call, got the call supernaturally. The Lord, I was doing my devotional time, got up to leave and I started shaking. And um, I said, Lord, do you wanna say something? So I sat down to go back and see if the Lord was speaking. And this was in 2009. And I just began to write, I'm a writer, I'm a scribe. I love to, to write a blog. So I sat down to write and out came my calling the healing and deliverance, including the Great Commission. And he gave me little pieces of what I was supposed to do, just on one little yellow tab of paper. I still have it to this day. And um, that involved deliverance. So I told my pastor, 
you know, I'm a deliverance minister. That's what I do. I do. And he goes, not every, you don't just do one thing. I said, well, I do. That's what I do. <laughs> and now I'm here going, oh, I'm eating crow because I do a lot more than that. But so anyway, it was really just my heart hurt for mentally ill people, addicts, those who have been trained in the wrong gospel. My heart hurt for that. And I just, I had a gift for it. I didn't realize it, but I had a gift for it because I was called to do it. And um, I'm getting a little emotional around it because sometimes you visit, you revisit those places. You remember those honeymoon periods with the Lord. I think every time should be, you know, you should always be on those special places. But there's something in the beginning when he's wooing you and calling you into that place. So that's, um, that's it in a nutshell. You can hear God's voice and prophesy. Every person with the Spirit of God living in them can be used by God for entry-level prophecy. Entry-level prophecy is the starting point of an incredible adventure in hearing God's voice and prophesying. Prophecy encourages, comforts, and edifies people. And our heart is to equip and educate you to hear God and prophesy, walking it out as a lifestyle. And that's why we created Entry-Level Prophecy eCourse on CharismaCourses.com. Through this powerful eCourse, you will be equipped to hear God and to prophesy. You will gain the necessary biblical understanding needed to take a step of faith and speak what you hear God saying to see people encouraged, comforted, and edified. In this course, you'll learn about the fruit of the Spirit, the character traits of God, how to receive and deliver a prophecy, how to judge a prophecy, and what foundation you need to prophesy, and what heart motivations are necessary to prophesy. When you enroll in this e-course, you'll also have access to bonus materials and our live coaching sessions. Go to charismacourses.com to purchase entry-level prophecy and learn how to hear God's voice and prophesy. Amen. Well, then you have this book, which I love, which you, you gave me an autographed copy, by the way. So thank you. You said, Jared, you have a passion to burn for Jesus. Never let the flame go out. Thank you so very much for that. Um, I love, you know, I, I personally love autographed books. Okay. It's just a personal thing, especially people that I know and I get to have on my podcast. So in the book, you, you share some principles. So you talk about the triune generals of darkness. Can you yeah. elaborate on that? So in this case, in these particular three, I believe there's many, many sets of triune generals. These are the three. This was after Trump had been elected. And I don't know if you recall this, but people were celebrating that Jezebel was was taken out of the White House. I don't know if you remember that, but or if you ever heard that. But there was some, and I, I remember just giggling to myself going, uh, no, that did not happen. I, I wished it happened, but it did not happen. And so at that time, I was I interceded a lot for President Trump um, that he would repent on behalf of all the behaviors that had gone on in the White House under the Obama administration. I'm just being real here. And then, of course, others before that, like verbally repent. And so yeah. during one of these prayer times, I saw three huge like gargoyle slash beasts of some sort on the white house and there were three of them and they so they kind of surrendered or surrounded the pinnacle and i and i don't remember i tried to look for the word but i couldn't find it i don't remember the whole download of it but it was the bottom line of it was there was leviathan antichrist and jezebel and they teamed up as an unholy trinity and it just mm -hmm. kind of lit up to me prophetically that jezebel operates of course in witchcraft and you remember all the witches came out after trump and during that election time i don't know if you've heard that but they were literally doing spells and praying against them and then of course perversion and you you see now under the whole alphabet soup community what a mess we are and yes. and, and then there's the antichrist which is secular humanism arising in the in the world and all of this was coming through the government and then leviathan who was controlling the media. And so all of this kind of came to me at once. And I kept going back to that scripture in Ephesians. You know it really well, right? Uh, Ephesians chapter 6, verses 12. And I kept going back to that scripture and thinking, um, why is it that we don't understand the pieces of this? And so I started looking, you know, that we've got 
we're wrestling. We have a, a wrestling match. We're not to give in to the wiles of the devil. We have to learn what those are. And I thought if we could identify what these words meant, principalities and powers, rulers, darkness, that's, and I started searching out that scripture and I was floored by what I found that all those definitions that I write in the book. And then that just began to prophetically release another level of understanding of spiritual warfare. So that's, yeah. Well, thank you. I don't know if my listeners heard, but one of my kids shouted in the background, that wasn't a demon guys. Okay. (laughs) I mean, I'll be honest, Ernestine, usually when I interview people, uh, deliverance ministers, there's some wacky stuff that happens with technology, and but everything's good right now. I don't want to put fear in anybody, but uh, in your book, you have this very intriguing insight into demons and fallen angels or spirits. Now, <clears throat> I've been in Bible college and seminary, and you know, I want people to know that it's okay to be challenged by your what we think is orthodox understanding about demons. Yeah. And if there's a difference between fallen spirits, fallen angels and demons or, you know, that kind of a thing, I want people to know that, uh, cause right now we we're like, there's angels and there's demons. Right. Right. But you have this, um, I love the way that you elaborated on it in, in this book, but I want people to know before you kind of define the differences there, that there are scholars in seminaries around the world that have the same understanding as you do. People that I was exposed to who are high up in the church world, but I'll be honest, in seminary, there are still points where we have professors say, you may not want to share this stuff to the common person, as if we're like the protectors of this special whatever knowledge or whatever, not in an esoteric or way or anything like that. But you know, I'm intrigued. They they write their doctoral theses on on these things. So uh, I want people to know this might challenge you. Ernestine is about to share, but Orthodox Christians, even for the last two thousand years, have believed it as well. Just you may never have heard it because it's not the majority view. So Ernestine, can you expand on that? Well, yeah. First of all, I didn't go to seminary, so I wasn't corrupted. Um, <laughs> No, I like that. I'm just kidding. I wanted to really bad and the Lord would not let me. He led me off to spirit led little Bible colleges and stuff. That's what he did. And so, um, so what happened and I, and I felt like the Lord woke me up with this that I'm supposed to share this this morning was in when my dad passed away in like 2002, he, um, uh, now, mind you, I was not walking with the Lord and I had some stuff going on in my world, but I had walked, I went to his home and I walked up to the bedroom and nobody was there. I walked up to the bedroom, stopped at the threshold and saw something out of the corner of my eye. And I saw white and black spirits fighting over him. And this is relevant to why I got off on this and began to learn this. And I was freaked out, like just terrified because ever since I was a little girl, I knew things. I saw things. Things, and you'll find that a lot with prophetic people. They knew, you know, they saw people who have discerning of spirits, that gift, they know and they see. And so that was kind of like the first awakening that God gave me this amazing encounter with my father to lead him back to the Lord. I wasn't even walking with God. I don't even know. It was crazy. Just so God said, get my word. I didn't know what the word was. And I called my husband. I said, I don't know what's going on. I'm not high. I'm not on morphine. I'm I'm good. I just, these things are happening. I don't know what to do. So as you can tell, I don't have a lot of filter. I just, I'm just real with the Lord. And so because of that experience, I think I was opened up to know something is greater out there than we understand. So that led me into, as I've been doing deliverance at my own life. I mean, I had demons. Oh, I had demons. And I began to be exposed in the spirit realm through revelation about, I mean, it's revelation. Like I didn't read this from anybody. This is things that the Lord had showed me mostly through learning people and the demons that held them hostage. But then through these scriptures, as I began to search them, I'm like, this explains everything I see in the spirit. So if I see a person that has perversion and a lying spirit or they twist their doctrines or whatever, or they're operating in some kind of manipulation. Oftentimes I know there's a Jezebel principality operating over that person. So here's how the Lord showed it to me. 
was these fallen angels don't need a body, but we're calling them demons. But demons mm -hmm. need a body. Fallen angels don't need a body. They're angels. They can do just like God's angels could. We've been taught, I think, that there are no more angels available to take take over the regions or do any of that. But I don't agree with that according to the scriptures, which I break down in this book. They're out there and they're still ruling over territories. And then you open up to what is the um, the very the, the the story with Legion and you and I have talked about that. Yeah. Open up to that. Just reread it today in, in the Gospel of Mark. Yeah. So if you open up to that, you go, wait a minute. Why do these demons want to leave this guy? What? So he's a strong man, or they put a strong man in him with a whole tribe of demons, a whole legion of them. You know military, so you know what that means. And they say, don't send us out of the region. Why? Who's puppeting them to stay there and go out on their assignments? And that's that's how I see the world. I see the world like that. I see the spiritual realm that way. And I think if we're going to go out, and this is the big takeaway for this book, so that's the Lord. I'm shaking. I can I can so totally feel this. So thank you, Jesus. Um, if we're going to go out and take and get that harvest, we keep going out with no understanding of spiritual warfare. And so we go out and approach prostitutes or drug addicts, not understanding that they're in a realm of influence where that demonic principality, let's say it's Jezebel or um you know, Antichrist, or as uh, Rabbi Jonathan Kahn would say, you've got Astrid, you've got Baal, you've got Moloch. And so let's just say we're going to go into a territory, but the territory is held in bondage by fallen angels that are puppeting demons, and the demons enter the people. We have to do something with that top layer, too. And the Bible says we're seated next to Jesus Christ far above those things. So we should be able to pray into that somehow with revelation, apostolic authority, prophetic insight, discerning of spirits, and deal with those so that they at least lose their grip. Where I think where we're working with God's angels, I'm not commanding God's angels. I don't even talk to angels at all. I stay away from anything that may get hairy. So um, I don't talk to them. I ask Jesus to assign his angels, or I believe that they're fighting for that territory, and I'm sent in. To help in that if that if any of that makes any sense did any of that make sense absolutely yes. absolutely my dog barked in the background so i didn't know that. <laughs> <laughs> and then someone just honked outside so whatever <laughs> well so fallen spirits fallen angels. do we call them fallen angels i call them fallen angels based on enoch's insight of and that's where I got this too. I started going through the book of Enoch. The Lord said, go through the book of Enoch. And I'm not even done. I'm not even close to finishing this assignment. But go through the book of Enoch and compare it to the Bible. And I've been doing that for a couple of years. Looking into mm -hmm. everything that Enoch said that lines up exactly with the word of God. And so go to Genesis 6. Go into Enoch. The difference is, I don't, I don't know why this information in Enoch is withheld from us. Um, I think it, if Christians can't handle the bare portion of Ephesians 6, 12, then they're not going to be able to handle Enoch. But Enoch, yeah, well, right? Go ahead. So the, the book of Enoch, um, we know that in the Bible, Enoch walked with God for about 400 years, and then God took him. So we compare scripture to scripture. It was a, possibly a very similar experience as Elijah being taken up into the whirlwind. So I have a... a translation if you will of the book of enoch and i've got actually got a couple so as a scholar we're exposed to different right. supplemental readings of the scripture right. so some christians right now would be like what are they talking about uh -oh. guys this is still within the realm of orthodox christianity yeah. you may never have been exposed to this outside of a sunday weekly service if you attend weekly <laughs> i won't go there but the book of Enoch is a supplemental reading. So it's, it is in the Ethiopian canon. Yes. In Ethiopia, in parts of Africa, it is within their Bibles. Yeah. So, you know, Fireborn Ministries, we have an extension site, uh, an affiliate, if you will, in Kenya, right? Uh, Fireborn Ministries there. They give out Bibles. We've supported giving out Bibles in the bush, you know, things like that. So, you know, I'm okay with 
there being more than 66 books because that's their canon there. Yeah. Different parts of the church went different directions over thousands of years. So the book of Enoch is uh, a supplemental reading. There are parts of it, like, because I've got other books of um, uh, the pseudepigrapha is what it's called. Uh -huh. You could tell this is fiction or, or portions of it are fiction. So with the book of Enoch as well, I'm just kind of summarizing this for some people there. It's mentioned in the New Testament, but there are portions of it that were corrupted, mm -hmm. right? And so it wasn't put in our Western canon because there's a few paragraphs or I don't, I don't know how much of it. I'm not one of the guys that researched that a couple thousand years ago, right. but there are parts of it that were corrupted, that were uh, people later put in fictional things or, or other paraphrases, if you will. So it wasn't put in there, but I'd encourage people, if you want to know more, about the spirit realm and things like that, it's okay to check this out, compare it with scripture and pray into it. So Ernestine goes into some detail about it. And uh, so Ernestine, back to you, if you could elaborate on that. Well, I love what you, uh, no, I like the way you put that and that's good. So taking, because I'm a word person, the word set me free. So I'm, I'm really love the word of God. I believe it needs to be preached with purity and every single bit of it needs to be preached. I see where, where Old Testament, New Testament completely complement each other. I don't see where everybody else goes. You know, they contradict. I see the complementary. You just have to read and study your word. And so that's why I'm studying. I'm pulling out what is scriptural in the book of Enoch and comparing it to the word of God and kind of making that mountain. But when you see in the spirit, you have to believe that people can see in the spirit, of course. If the number one thing is if people say, I don't believe in apostles and prophets, I don't believe the gifts are for today, they're suscitation, then you might as well mix say them because they're not ever going to believe what you have to say anyway, right? So they're not going to yeah. believe you. They're not going to believe what you preach or what I preach. I come from a very sound biblical background with this i try not to get weird i don't want to run people off but yet if because to me seeing in the spirit realm should be normal we should see elisha pray for his servant to be eyes to be open so he could see the angel armies of god and he saw and so enoch was a seer like ezekiel and when you study those two out you're like they're very similar in the way but we don't reject ezekiel and he saw some right. crazy stuff we don't reject the prophets that laid on their side and preach naked and they did some weird things. So, so as Isaiah, by the way. Yeah. So we um so we we don't reject the weirdness of the prophets, but we tend to reject the weirdness of seeing in the spirit and of the man and woman of God today. So the bottom line for me is I question God where the evil comes from. And when I saw what Enoch wrote about the angels teaching the women who go to Genesis 6, they took for wives, they had sex with them, they had babies with them. What happened to those spirits? What, what happened to the giant spirits? According to Enoch, he has an explanation for it. So that was very intriguing for me as well. And that just kind of, to me, just put the nail, you know, hit the nail on the head. This is where spirits come from and there and then there is the hierarchy of the angels the territorial rulers because ephesians 6 12 don't fit with what we understand about demons it, it doesn't work right. so well ephesians 6 because i'm i'm praying into doing a biblical spiritual warfare webinar coming up again i'm you know i'm, I'm the holy spirit guy so it's like oof. but Ephesians chapter six, man, this is a freebie for everybody. The Geneva Bible actually has it better. Now, I'm not, there's no conspiracy about Bible translations. Get one that you could read, that you understand, that that you could study into. If you really want to go deeper, then go deeper into the Greek, the Hebrew, and the Aramaic, okay? Not 99% not of us can't do that. But Ephesians chapter six in the Geneva Bible shows, yes, there are spiritual wickedness, principalities powers but it also shows how we do wrestle against worldly governors people in physical people in political office and the king james king james was this will probably be censored off of some places but he was a corrupt individual immorally bankrupt yeah. 
homosexual, all that, who didn't like the Geneva Bible, which was published before the King James Version. He didn't like it because it showed that we do, we wrestle against spiritual principalities, but we also wrestle with governors, world rulers, okay? That's talking about physical people and political offices. So that's one reason why he made the authorized King James Version. Now, if you love the King James, I love it. It's poetic and all that. But don't be a King James only kind of person. Don't think that he was a saint because he was far from it. Okay. He only had the Bible printed because he was like, just give people what they want. They want the Bible, but let's put it under our control. Okay. But anyway, all that being said, I'm stepping off my soapbox. Ernestine, this is, oh, man, there's so much more that we could discuss. But I want to point people in the direction of your of your book. End of Days Battle, Satan's Triune Generals of Darkness. I have a link for that in the podcast description. Or if they're listening to a podcast app that, that doesn't allow links, go, go to Amazon or anywhere else. But Ernestine, what is the best way for people to get a hold of you for more information? Uh, well, go to spiritwindhealingministries.org or you can email us at info at spiritwindministries.org. Um, you can also see our phone number on there for the church and you can text it. You can email us um, at the books are on sale from on there. If you're looking for deliverance and healing, we have books for that. We have classes starting in February. Super excited to launch uh, my new, my updated Demolishing Demonic Strongholds. That is actually my baby. I wasn't sure why I gave you that book I gave you, but I felt that's what the Lord said to give. And it's probably for this very reason to promote a deeper understanding of territorial spirits and doing warfare out there at another level besides just personal warfare. So um, I just took you off for a second, but I was I was really questioning that. And then hopefully in February, we'll have this book out. This is, I'm gonna have to show you it. So this is the new cover. I'm super excited to have this and it should be out in Spanish in February. And that's like, I'm super excited to have it in Spanish. So anyway, you can find these books on there and you can just, Lots of free resources on our website and on YouTube. We're out there. We're on Facebook. We're on X, Instagram, um, just doing our thing. Really, the whole goal is to do the Great Commission, fulfill it the way God's called us to do. I love it. Fulfill the Great Commission the way God has called us to do it. Amen. Amen. Ernestine, it was an honor and a pleasure to have you on Adventures in the Spirit. I want to encourage everybody, check out her, her book, go to her website. And also don't forget, I've got a free PDF avail available for you, Steps to Your Freedom from Demons. I bless you all in the name of Jesus. Thank you so much for listening to Adventures in the Spirit with Jared Lasky, a podcast that activates you to live the supernatural life. Subscribe to this podcast on your favorite podcast platform and share it with your friends. Leave a five-star rate and review, which helps us reach more people with the love and power of the Holy Spirit and partner with us at firebornministries.com. And may you live your best spirit-empowered life and have your own adventures in the Holy Spirit.